What's up guys, this is Doug from Basement Level Magic. This is going to be my first Battle for Zenicar draft. Uh, we'll see what we open here. Uh, looks like a Cinder Glade. Um, and I am new to this set. I actually don't know what anything is worth, so I am going to double check that real quick. So Cinder Glade is worth like five tickets. So I am actually probably just going to take that. Um, but looking at the rest of the pack, um, my second choice would most likely have been I do think Benthic Infiltrator is an excellent card, uh, and I would definitely consider that. Um, I'm not going to turn down the tickets, uh, but um, I also like the red green from everything I've seen. The red green allies looks like an excellent deck, so maybe we end up in that. All right. Also, if we end up in the allies deck, uh, the ally encampment is a pretty decent card, uh, as it can use it can make any color of mana. Uh, so if you end up with allies in two or three colors, it's a uh, it's a nice fixer. Um, so as far as red picks, we got a couple good uh, or decent red creatures. And Eldrone is very good, allowing you to ping an opponent um, possibly multiple times per turn if you time it right with your other colorless spells. Um, the Velikut Invoker also quite good. I'm kind of looking for a red or a green pick just because I have this land and I'd kind of like to play it. Um, other than that, the Sentinel's decent. Clutch of Currents is okay. Um, I think we probably just take the Nettle Drone here. Uh, I hate to go into a third color with the uh, Resolute Blade Master, although I do think he's quite good. Alright, looking at this pack, we have a land, couple of landfall creatures in green. Three, actually. Uh, outnumber is a good combat trick. Um, Unified Front, I think, looks decent. Um, as far as the best card in the pack goes, probably the Unnatural Aggression, as it's a fight card. And it, uh, it feeds processors if you end up in a Devoid strategy. So I think I'll probably take that. Uh, the Marasa Ranger is interesting, but I don't know, it seems kind of expensive. Uh, the Snapping Narlet is actually quite good. I think I'm probably going to switch gears and take that. I think the two drops in this format are incredibly powerful. Um, and I think I would rather go in that direction. So, Painful Truths, yeah, that seems alright. Stonewalker, yeah, Stonewalker I've seen played a bit, and it seems alright. Uh, Swell of Growth is a good combat trick, and there aren't that many combat tricks in this format. Um, so, I think I might just go with that. as it keeps me in green. It is a two drop, same as the Akum Stonewalker, but paying three mana for a three one that you don't get to keep seems kinda expensive as well. And the only time I've ever seen it played, I see them use I see them play the Akum Stonewalker on turn two. Pay the three mana on turn three, but after that they have other things they want to be doing and so they don't actually end up using it. I do think Rot Shambler's quite good. I don't think Lava Step Rider is very good. The Territorial Bailoth is quite good. Um, I think I'm going to take the Rot Shambler here. I had hoped to play an Allies kind of deck, but it doesn't look like we're going in that direction. I think the Predator is probably the best card here, especially in the colors we're already in. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Processor Assault. So you have to process a card to do 5 damage mm -hmm. to a creature. 
There's no guarantee we'll have processed any cards so far anyway. Yeah, I think that's fine. Angelic Captain, I don't know if you guys watched my um, my openings, my uh, fat pack openings, but I opened like two of those. And I'm not crazy about the card. Five mana. But you have to be deep into allies to make it worthwhile. I think the Tejiro Beastmaster probably good enough. Uh, it is an ally, but it's got a decent body on it, and it also has a decent ability, even if we only get it the one time. So, yeah, I'll take that. So, Molten Nursery's good. Blister Pot is good. We have a Swell of Growth. I think Blister Pot here... So Boiling Earth definitely has a place. Is it better than an Oran Reef Invoker? I'm not sure. I think I would like to have a Boiling Earth or two for the sideboard, possibly. Uh, but I think that those will be able we'll be able to pick those up later. I'm gonna take the two drop. We're solid green. I I could definitely get out of red if I felt like there was something better out there. The Resolute Blade Master comes back. Interesting. So we currently have one green ally, so we'd have to be in three colors if we want to play that as well. Uh, I'm just going to take the Vestige of Emrakul. And here I'm going to take the Fight card. I'm going to take the Whiptail. I don't know that it, it gets played. I mean, it's it's... Landfall ability is pretty decent. I'll take the Unnatural Aggression. I'll take the Lava Step Rider for the board. This is a decent first pack. Um, if we stay green red, I mean, everything looks to be playable. Conduit of Ruin. When you cast Conduit of Ruin, make sure you library for a colorless creature card with converted mana cost 7 or greater. Reveal it, put it on top of your library. And the first creature spell you cast each turn costs mm -hmm. 2 less to cast, so it's definitely. It's a go and get a big thing and ramp card, which I like. Um, if we want to try and switch over into Fire Mantle Mage to get more allies, I mean, that's available. Complete Disregard is great, but in black, we're not playing black. So Fertile Thicket doesn't ramp you, it just ensures you're not going to miss your next land drop. Which, I'm not sure how I feel about that exactly. And a Fire Mantle Mage may have a good enough ability that just one attack with it is worthwhile, but I think we can play the Conduit of Ruin. Um, so I'll take it and maybe we get another Eldrazi. Or Runner of Slaughter. It's interesting in green in this set. There's a there's a lot of cards that allow you to not miss your lands, but they don't ramp you. I mean, if this said put it on the battlefield, yeah, that'd be a great card. Uh, the worm is nothing special. Volcanic upheaval. I don't know. That's probably just a sideboard card at best. What's the hammer do? Hmm. Bounce your own land, play it again, I guess. It allows uh, landfall to be hit on consecutive turns. Um, so that's nice. I mean, you could, I guess you could actually attack and then play afterwards uh, the same land. So that, that actually is kind of cool, but I'm going to take the worm. I don't know if it gets played, but it 
fits the deck the best so far. We got another blister pot or an earthen arms. Or a touch of the void. I think we just want the touch of the void. Yeah. So here in red, green, we have this infused with the elements that in a two color deck I'm just not that crazy about. Another one of the worms. Probably we just take the looming spires. Because it'll actually see play in our deck most likely. Eyeless Watcher, that one does ramp you. Which is probably just the way we go. Yeah. Currently at 17 cards. Ugh, Hondu Rising. This card is amazing. I may even splash for it. I don't think I want another Looming Spires. Well, Outnumber's probably pretty good in this deck. Yeah, we'll take it. Uh, we'll probably take another Eyeless Watcher since we're not really an ally deck. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to take the Cohort. Or it could be time to take the Ruin Processor. Since the Conduit of Ruin allows us to go find it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and pick up at least one more Eldrazi, but in the last pack, I think we'll take another Eyeless Watcher. Here's some cards we can actually play. So we've got the Landfall creature that gets plus one uh, and has Trample or another Nettle Drone. Or an Ondu Champion. I think the Slide Runner is probably our best bet. I would like to beef up my two drop slot. And in that same vein, I think I will take another Snapping Gnarlid. Uh, I'm going to take the Volcanic Upheal for the sideboard. I don't think I'll play it. The Earthen Arms I may play, and the only reason is because of the Awaken ability. Yeah, and you can actually put the two one one counters on the land that you're going to use to to awaken, making it actually a six six. So that that's kind of cool. Um, two four drops of our choice here. We can have another belligerent whip tail or an infuse with the elements. I'll take the whip tail. But I don't know if I want to. Take the war paint. I don't think that's these play either. I would like something at the top end. Um, if you've watched any of Josh's content, he has been talking big about how important uh, it is to have synergy in your deck in this format. And I'm not sure that this one has it. So we'll kind of have to wait and see how it goes in pack three. Um, it doesn't look bad to me. I mean, I got mostly creatures. Let's see, this is Renewal. I don't think that is a first pickable card. Yeah, I think that might be good enough just on its own. Either that, or we take, what, another Bailoth? We don't have a Bailoth yet. Eh, four drop or five drop? If I had a lot more allies, this card would be much better. But I'm not an ally deck. Uh, I think I take the Bailoth here. Hmm. 
So choices here are vile aggregate, which I think could be good. Um, so we can play the Nettle Drone, both Eyeless Watchers, but if we play an Eyeless Watcher, I mean, we're looking at having quite a power on the on the Vile Aggregate, and we may get another Eyeless Watcher back. Uh, other than that, we can get another Blister Pod. I think we take the Aggregate. That's good. Hmm. Retreat to Valakut sounds pretty good. Stasis Snare, if we were in that color, sounds good. The um, plus two plus O oh doesn't seem as relevant, but the target creature can't block seems pretty good to me. Um, I don't know how many outnumbers I want, although with a lot of token producers, outnumber does get better. I think outnumber is probably just a better card. I can only hit creatures though. And we'll try the we'll try this out. I've seen pathway errors just wreck people. I think we take call of the science here. Here our choices are between another nettle drone or a swell of growth. I have so many creatures, I think I want to take the Swell of Growth. Chasm Guide, though. Mm, yeah, if I had more allies, I think I'm going to take the Swell of Growth. So we sort of started out trying to go for kind of a allies theme, but it just didn't work out. Uh, here there's no green card for us. Uh, I'll take the Invoker. Uh, late game, he does get pretty good. Probably take the Scions here and then hope to get the unnatural aggression back. At this point I'll take any Eldrazi for the top end. But since there isn't one we'll take the Sure Strike. Green and red certainly seem to be open. I don't know if that's a good or good or a bad thing. So I think here we want the ruin processor just to have something at the top end. Most people are playing at 18 lands in this format. I generally agree, but I do not have a serious top end in this deck. Um, I'm probably looking to cut from the three drop slot. Let's see, another Eyeless Watcher. So we ended up like kind of like a green Devoid deck. Uh, yeah. And then we take the Menace card. I I don't think that card's very good. 4-4 four, for four, 5 with Menace. I don't know. Maybe he's fine, but he seems to come down late, and the cards that are coming down late in this format seem to be quite large. So we'll take Kozilek Sentinel. And I suppose we take the uh, Cohort. Got a lot of cuts to make. Alright, so I have 11 known creature cards. 
including mm -hmm. Call of the Scions, which is a creature card. I think that's too many Swell of Growth. I would play... So the Unnatural Aggressions actually feed my Eldrazi for processing, so I think I actually do want to leave those. I think I'm going to cut the Retreat. I want to play the Touch of the Void, though. Um, Swell of Growth is both a combat trick and a ramp. So I kind of like that. But we do have enough mm -hmm. landfall. Mm -hmm. So Rotshamber has good synergies with all the token producers. Mm -hmm. Arn Reef Invoker is just a good mm -hmm. late game card. Kindy Sidrunner is mm -hmm. a good early game card. Uh, and Kozlik Sentinel mm -hmm. is pretty pretty okay. I would even say average. But it's a two drop, so we'll play it. Um, and then Nettle Drone seems good. Velcid Invoker seems fine. Predator seems good. Vile Aggregate. Let's see, so playing both Call of the Scions and three Iowa's Watchers, I think the Vile Aggregate is quite good. So I'm gonna hang on to that. The Belligerent Whiptail I think I'll cut. I like the Vestige of Emrakul just because the body's so large. I have essentially zero reason or zero ways to answer a flyer, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm also not crazy about the worm. I mean, I have the two Vestiges of Emrakuls, which are just the same creature almost. And I think if I was going to have one or the other, I'd rather have the toughness. So we still have quite a few cuts to make. Let's see if the Beastmaster fits. He's got a powerful ability, and because it happens when he comes in too, I think it's worth keeping him in. Uh, so outnumber can be quite good early. I think Earthen Arms might get the cut. So I'm down to six non-creature spells, so I need to cut some creatures. Probably from in here. So the Eyeless Watchers ramp well, and they make me go wide. I'm going to cut the Invoker. I think in this particular deck, um, he'd have to come down late game to have any impact anyway. Maybe in every deck. Probably one watcher, maybe two's enough. So the the cool thing about the conduit of ruin is it allows me to go get the ruin processor and then cast them for five. So that actually is any creature, really. So if I'm playing one, I'm playing both, is basically what I'm thinking. I don't know that we're necessarily the most aggressive of decks. Um, I think the Valka Predator is, a, is an aggro card, so I'm going to cut him and the McKindy slide runner. I still need to make two cuts. I'm kind of thinking that a four drop. Maybe one vestige of Emrakul. I actually think I'm going to play 17 lands. 
So we want to bring in the Cinder Glade, we want to bring in the Looming Spires, and then we actually have pretty good options for sideboarding. So let's see, 10 and 5. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll submit that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the first round.